Hello guys, and welcome to Matt's Beamer. Thanks to my good friend, Leo Shakalis in Cyprus, I am able to from his very reliable workhorse, which does all the dirty work in Cyprus, in a hot boiling sun, hence why the paintwork is a bit, well, messed up. It has also been driven in the snow up the mountains. This is a 1997 Mitsubishi Pajero. This one here is a pre-facelifted car. A car which is loved by the Cypriots. Another car the Cypriots tend to love is the Mercedes E-Class. I have done an in-depth tour on Leo's W210 E-Class the last time I was over in Cyprus. The link will be shared down below. Anyway, the Pajero is a name that has been with Mitsubishi since about 1982 and has gone through four generations, though I believe the fifth generation is due out about now. Not only has the Pajero been out for years, it has also had many names in different countries. In the UK, we call it the Shogun. The Americans call it the Montero. And the list goes on. I will just embarrass myself trying to pronounce them. So, this is my favourite version, the second generation, known as the V20. It replaced the LO40 in 1991 and I still made it until 1999 as the main model. Other countries had it for much longer. The Philippines and Venezuela had it until about 2008, and Colombia had it until 2012. The amazing thing is though, in China, they made them from 2002, and they still make them now. But now they are called something else. However, let's stick to the most famous one we all know and remember. The V20 was made in either a 3-door or 5-door body style, long and short wheelbases. You had a choice of either petrol or diesel. The petrol engines came in a 2.4 or a 2.6 inline 4, or a 3-litre or 3.5-litre V6. The turbo diesel engines were both 4 cylinders, and they were known as the 2.5 or the 2.8. You had a choice of 3 gearboxes, Either a 4 or 5 speed Horizon Automatic or a 5 speed manual. Leo's Pajero is a 1997 2.8 turbo diesel fitted with the 4 speed automatic transmission. The colour is Sudan Beige in metallic. The code name is S74. Let's start as I normally do at the front of the vehicle. This vehicle is a pre facelifted car. On top of the big long bonnet is an air scoop to keep the hot engine bay cool. I think it looks a lot better than the ones not fitted with it. Mitsubishi's famous three diamond logo sits proudly on the black plastic grille, which has three black slats. I have also seen these grilles available with chrome or colour coded. The headlights are round but are built into a rectangle unit. To the outer edge of each indicator is where the indicators and side lights are located. They can also be seen from the side of the vehicle. Just below the black grille, we have some colour coded trim and then a big black massive front bumper, which is in three sections, which makes it cheaper and easier to fix when you go off roading. The central area is metal, while the outer parts are made from plastic. The bumper has jet washers to clean those headlights. A cool but simple design. Under the front bumpers is what I think is called the sump guard. It basically protects the lower parts of the engine, for example, the sump, from getting bashed by foreign objects such as rocks. Heading back to the big long bonnet, you will notice that the windscreen washers are sat on top towards the back. Just back from the bonnet is a vented panel, and just behind that are the old school black wipers. There was no worrying about style or aerodynamics back then. Moving on down to the front wings. On top is the car's aerial. They would normally pop up if the radio is turned on. On each front wing is the Bajero sticker. You will have also noticed that Mr. Bushy stuck a big round orange indicator on the side too. Mitsubishi have given the Bajero a beefier look by making the wheel arches wider. I prefer this look over the more modern, plain versions. 
The alloy wheels in this car are the 15 inch six spoke style wheels. In the center is a big chrome center cap with the Mitsubishi logo. The tires are 31 by 10.50 R15s. The front suspension has independent double wishbone suspension with torsion bars and shocks, while the front brakes are vented discs, which work hard to slow this heavy beast down. The ride height on this car is 210 millimeters. Behind each wheel is the car's very large mud flaps, which are supposed to protect the car's bodywork. The electronic wing mirrors on this car are big and black and also made from plastic. They usually match the color of the grille. For example, if you have a chrome grille, you'll get chrome mirrors. The main trim around the side windows is black in color, but you will also notice there are some chrome areas too. You will notice that the windows have a slight greenish blue tint to them, ideal for the bright sunlight. The door handles are black in plastic, and the back ones are too. I think they also match the colors of the wing mirror and the grill. I'd personally go for the chrome look. The key slots are separate from the actual door handle itself. Along the bottom edge of the doors are plastic trim pieces, which are easier to change and is also cheaper than buying a new door. This car has side steps. So the ride height in this car is 210 millimeters. It is 4,655 millimeters in length. It has a height of 1,890 millimeters and a width of 1,695 millimeters. The rear wheel arches are plastic too. The rear wheels are the same size as the front ones. The rear suspension is an independent spring setup and the rear brakes are discs. Below the rear side window is the model sticker saying what model you own, 2,800 means it's a 2.8, referring to the CC of the vehicle. To open the fuel door, you need to pull the lever inside. On the door is the recommended fuel you need for the car. To close the door, you just push it back in. Let's look around the back. Along the top edge is a lip, which is kind of a little drain to help the water escape. Or basically just the old fashioned way of sticking the panels together. On the top of the rear door, it's where the rear jet washer sits. Behind the spare wheel is the rear wiper. The spare is held on by three nuts. This one has a locking wheel nut. The rear door key slot. Above the square rear number plate is the unit for housing the number plate bulbs and the door handle. There is also the word Mitsubishi in chrome. The rear lights are clear and functional they also have lens protectors, though I'm not sure they work quite well enough. On the bottom right hand side of the door is the spec badge. You can also see that this door has exposed hinges. This thing here is the tow bar extension. You really don't want to catch any on this beast. Also on the rear bumper are some more lights, which also have indicators and brake lights too. The rear bumper is also metal with a plastic cover on each corner. Let's have a look inside the car. This is the key, back to basics here. I won't show you the central lock and working though because this one here does a crazy dance. Inside the car, we have a very practical interior, but back in the days, it was considered a luxury vehicle to challenge the Range Rover. This vehicle has had so much use over the years in the very hot Cyprus summer sun. The seats are covered in a grey leather type material, though they actually could be leather, I'm not too sure. Along the back of the dash are the usual windscreen air vents, while at both ends of the dash we have a vent for the side windows. Let's start from the top centre of the dash. In the centre we have a special unit which is supposed to help you when you are off-road. On the left we have the altimeter which gives you the car's altitude level. In other words, how high you are above sea level. Ideal for when you are traveling those mountain roads. The little black knob helps you adjust it. In the center is the inclinometer, which shows you what angle the car is sitting at. 
and the digital gauge on the right hand side is the exterior temperature gauge. The passenger gets a grab handle to stop them messing their pants, ideal for when you take this beast off road. Along the front edge of the dash we have four air vents, very basic and easy to use, function before style. Under the central one is the open and close switch for that vent. Between the central air vents is a digital clock which can be altered with the three buttons just below it. Just below the clock is a slide along switch which I believe stops the warm air coming out of the central top air vent. Heading on down we have the air conditioning system. The big rotary knob on the left hand side is the zone control system. The one next to that is the temperature control. To the right of the two big knobs we have two little knobs. The smaller one on the left is the four speed fan control. And the economy and air conditioner switch is to the right of that. Just below that we have the air circulation switch. And moving on further down we have the aftermarket Sony head unit. It may have a CD changer somewhere else in the car. Under the radio is a storage unit which is also a slot for maybe another accessory for the radio. This car is fitted with a 4 speed automatic transmission. To move the gear you need to press the button on the side and put your foot on the brake. The gear you have selected is also displayed on the dash. And there is also an overdrive button on the right hand side of the gear stick too. Here is a 12 volt power point. This lever here is to help you control the super select four wheel drive system. This car can be driven as a rear wheel drive or four wheel drive car. It also changes the ratio of the gearbox from a high or low ratio. To be honest, this system is pretty clever for the year. All is displayed on the dash. Moving on back, we have more buttons. But first, there's this minging little ashtray. Remember kids, do not smoke. This switch is the auto mode. It changes the driving style of the gearbox. There is eco mode, power mode and hold mode. There's another lighter and a button which turns the rear fan on and off. The old school handbrake. Oh and look, a two stage bottom warmer. Though I don't think it's been used in the hot summer sun of Cyprus. The passenger also gets a heated seat too. There is a storage space in the middle of the car which can be opened up and inside there are two cup holders which hide the main storage unit. There are more small storage spaces around the edges too. The front passengers also get armrests. Push the button to move them down. Over to the driver's view, the instrument cluster. On the left hand side is the rear heated window button and just below that is the hazard light switch. The gauge on the left hand side is a speedometer. The little black knob resets the trip mileage. The fuel and temperature gauge is in the middle along with the gear display. Sorry about the dust. Here is the super select four drive system. On the right hand side we have the rev counter. Here is the rear fog light switch and the immobiliser light. This four spoke wheel has a built in airbag and two horn buttons. It also has power steering which is the old fluid design type. The left hand stalk has the wiper controls. This button on the left is the aerial switch and the rotating knob on the right hand side adjusts the brightness of the dashboard lights. This lever down here is used to release the fuel flap. The right hand stalk controls the vehicle's lights and indicators. This car has the older key ignition system and as you can see this is where the electric mirror switches are located. And below this lot is the bonnet release system and a lower speaker. This car has two map reading lights and a very very saggy sun visors. The passenger one has a mirror. The rear view mirror is basic in design. There are grab handles all around and extra ones for the rear passengers to get in the car. Let's have a look at the door. 
On the top edge, there are the instructions for the transfer lever. The plastic door grab, the interior release handle is chrome in style. Here are the electric window switches. The driver's one is auto, up and down, depending on how hard you press or pull the button. The window lock locks the rear windows, so they can't be opened by the people in the rear. Moving on down, we have a thin storage compartment. There are also red safety lights. You can lock the door by pressing this pin down. The front seats have a few adjustments. This lever here adjusts the angle of the backrest, while this one here moves the seat backwards and forwards. This funny lever under the seat controls the firmness of the bounce the seat gives you. Under the steering column is a lever which allows you to adjust the steering wheel's height. Let's jump into the passenger seat. As before, the grab handle is a firm place to grab hold of. And down below that is the lockable glove box. Unfortunately, Leo lost the key for this, so I can't show you inside. And to the left of that glove box is another speaker. Let's have a look in the back of the car. In the back, you have a nice ride height for looking over those hedges. Ideal if you're a nosy person. Or back in the 1990s, when the original people used to look down on the mere mortals in their little saloon cars. The door is pretty basic and has no storage, but it does have a horrid ashtray and a child lock. At least it has a handle to help you inside. The side step is also useful for that too. Behind the front seat is a little storage pocket. And here is the view of what the rear passenger sees. Down here are the controls for the heating and cooling system, a on and off switch, and a free speed fan. And this slide along thing allows you to select hot or cold. The legroom in the back is pretty good, and so is the headroom. Up on the roof, we have more interior lighting. The rear passengers get outer armrests, which have a little hole to put your cup in. The lever to the side helps you access the back of the car to help you fold the seats down. This pin here also helps fold the seat down. Let's have a look in the boot. The boot handle is under here. The boot space is 330 litres with the seats up in the normal position. The boot space can be increased to 1,100 litres. Behind seat number six and seven are some speakers. Here are how the rear seats are stored out of the way. Not very practical in my opinion. The windows for the boot have a slide along window. Next to the rear door is the fire extinguisher. I'm guessing it came with the car. This is where you put your washer fluid for the rear wiper system. There is also a rear interior door handle. Also in the rear door is the car's toolkit, which is pretty cool. Let's have a look under the bonnet. So this car here has a 2.8 8 valve inline four turbo diesel engine. The engine has 123 brake horsepower, which gets the car to 0 to 60 in under 20 seconds, but some places say it is quicker. This is back when diesels were slow. Apparently, this car does around about 22 miles per gallon. Let's start her up and have a listen. If you got to the end of watching this video, thank you for watching it. There are two more in-depth tours coming up soon. A 2010 Fiat Bravo 1.6 diesel, 
and my dad's new car, which is a 2012 BMW X6 based on the E71 chassis. I'm looking forward to showing you that car, and now I want to buy one myself. Thanks once again for watching, please like, share and subscribe, take care and thank you.